things that has always fascinated me all my life has been magic. That's the art of conjuring, the entertainment and performing art of magic. Uh, something I loved as a child and fascinates me right to this very day. And this week, I'm fortunate to have with me master magician Jacques Lesseur to ask him all about what it really means to be a magician in this day and age. Check it out. So Jacques, what a pleasure to have you here. Good morning. Nice to have you. The interesting thing about magic, of course, is that everyone knows, maybe they know, it's not really real. Or it's well. There's something about it that isn't real. It includes a bit of deception, shall yeah. we say? And um, and in my profession as an astrologer, <laughs> there's some people out there who think it's not really real either. <laughs> so so the, the weird like crossover is yeah. into magic and is into astrology. Hmm, <laughs> maybe that's a problem. But <laughs> but maybe you really need to tell us. <clears throat> well, firstly, what you think magic really is, or magic is about. For me, magic is an experience of the wonderful, of the amazing things in life. Uh, it's a reminder of what's possible in life. Um, I tra I've travelled a lot, so for me it's, it's a, it sinks out quite nicely. Um, when you travel, you experience new and amazing things, and magic brings that experience to people who don't get to see it in day-to-day -day life. It's a little wake-up call in the middle of your day. You see mm -hmm. two or three minutes of magic at a, at a restaurant or at a party, and you go, wow, that's, that's amazing. I can't figure that out. It's something incredible that you can take with you. Just a reminder of, of amazing things. So that's uh, it's interesting because like what I was saying, I mean, we all know there's an element of deception of magic, mm -hmm. in magic. So it is about amazing things, but then they're not real. I mean... Yeah, as a magician, we're, we're actors playing the part of magicians. So I'm creating a moment of something that could be real, for two or three things, you might you might put your guard down and say, "Okay, this is real," and then afterwards you go, "It's a trick." But for that moment, I'm creating that moment of of, of what is the word of impossible mm. that people will then they know it's not real, but they, they they like to think it might be. Do you think in any way it helps them accept other things which might be a bit yeah, impossible? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Open their mind. Yeah, and it might remind them of things that they've forgotten. Um, it, it, brings out the child in each of us. So as a child, we, everything's amazing, everything's yeah. magical, everything's impossible. And we forget that in day-to-day -day life. We, we go to work nine to five, we forget things, we rush into the house, we forget to acknowledge things around us that are, it's just a little, it's like a lens on the world, which mm. you can give to people. Because, I mean, it is, so I guess, I heard someone call it a performance art. I've yeah. never heard of it, that, that's a brilliant description. Yeah, I've never heard of it described that way before. It's a very unique, it's an art form and a, and a craft because the, the tricks that we do are, are very difficult to, to, if you don't do them right, mm. it's obviously not magic. Yeah. Um, it has to work every time. So as a good magician, you try to find tricks that will work consistently. So in that form, it's a craft, you've got to practice your, your craft. But it's an art form in some senses because we bring out, um, we create an art, a moment of art for people where they, they experience the beauty in life. I think art, mm. form, art for me is, is seeing the world in, through a different lens and seeing something beautiful that I didn't expect. There is, I mean, I've seen a lot of actual beauty in mm. magic. I've seen performances by Tommy Wonder, yeah. which was a He was at the convention. He was, yeah. yeah. I feel quite privileged to have yeah. seen him, I think. Yeah. One of the best magicians I, I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. Darren Brown, I think, for, for contemporary audiences, has taken it to a whole yeah. new level. Absolutely. He's a, he's a genius who happens to do magic, I think. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's done some incredible... And he's written a book, a philosophy book on yeah. happiness and how yeah, to find called, it. It's called Happiness, I think. Yeah. It's, it's about stoicism or stoicism. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's about stoicism. Yeah. That's interesting to astrology, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But the astrology and stoicism are quite, you know, happy with yeah. each other. So it's yeah. interesting. I may just read that yeah. book. Yeah, because that was the whole stoic's yeah. point. Mm -hmm. It was. That mm -hmm. uh, there is a way to be happy if you yeah. actually accept yeah. how the world is. Yeah. Well, because Darren Brown as well, I mean, what you see with a lot of people, you see it a lot with Darren Brown, but you even see it with the more conventional magicians. When they do something extraordinary, people actually still think it's real. So it goes to that point where people seem to be willing to accept that Absolutely. the possible happens. The, the, the nice thing in, in South Africa or in Africa, doing magic in Africa, is that we have a culture where magic is ingrained in our society. Yes. Especially in, in tribal groups. Yes. Um, people are, are more open to the idea of magic. Um, I know a lot of, there, there are a lot of magicians in Europe and America that uh, sort of shrug it off and say they're comedians that do, they're prop comics, so they're comedians that do magic. 
they don't own the fact that they're magicians. Mm. There's a guy in Las Vegas called Paul Vigel, and he spent some time in the Amazon as a as a ethnobot uh, ethnobotanist. So he was studying. He lived with the with the tribes in in South America, and he's come together with a close up show in in Las Vegas, which is hugely acclaimed because he has an understanding of the magical experience for the audiences. Whereas, so we were lucky as magicians in in, in Cape Town or South mm. Africa because we have people that that can show us wonder. They, they experience magic in a different way to say a European audience or an American audience. There's also that willing suspension of disbelief. Yeah. We kind of, you agree almost to enter yeah. into this. And it's, it's an interaction. It's a, yeah. it's a, we were talking earlier, there's a, a saying that somebody was writing about magic and saying it's one of the only art forms where the audience is actually actively participating in the moment of the artwork. So as a painter, you can have people painting at the, mm. with you or, or interactive, but magic is, seems to be the only form where it's the audience has to be there for it to work. Yeah, well, it's, it's almost like involved, yeah. the art doesn't exist without, without the audience standing yeah. in front of it, yeah. which yeah. is it's an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah it requires their suspension and disbelief yeah. or their belief yeah. to happen. Exactly, which is an amazing. Yeah. I have seen a magician in the rural area and don't seem to understand. There, there is a bit of a fear element as well, especially in, I've been through Central Africa and had experiences with. I did a show in Congo and I was in the hotel. Um, reception area and the French lady behind the counter said please show this lady some magic and there was a woman from Mali in a very beautiful dress with a big headdress and all her suitcases and a gold credit card and she I pulled the sponge ball out of her ear and she screamed and knocked her headdress off and ran down the, the road and left everything there and two days later she wow. hadn't come to collect any of her stuff wow. she was petrified of, of the magic so I, I as a magician I, I like to people always ask me do I believe in magic I say yes because for me, magic is everywhere. Everything is magical. I'm skeptical of people that try and use magic to uh, con mm. people. And there are people out there. Sure. Um, whether they're uh, witch doctors in Central Africa or shown yeah. in Las Vegas, they're getting people's money out of them for by pretending to be something they're not. So for me, that's, that's not the right way to do magic. So that fear thing is is for me an unfortunate side of, of magic but like you say there are like groups of children that will watch magic and love it and yeah. will, so that, that for me is the magical moment where people are loving magic and loving life enjoying what you do I'm not so excited about the, the skeptical uh, you know I've seen um, I, I know uh, an academic mm. who suggests I was just thinking about what you said about uh, witch doctors in, in Central Africa who says that part of what they're doing in trickery, yeah. and they do use overt trickery. Yeah. I mean, even yeah, you'd recognize to say, people would recognize yeah, it we would recognize, it. and that's why I don't know if there are any magicians who think that there's such a thing as psychic surgery, for example, yeah. because we all know how to do that. Yeah. However, the experience of that might enable the witch doctor to actually do the real healing that he's yeah. got to do. So he breaks down their resistance mm. or their disbelief. And, and for an audience, if it's if they see it and for them it's real, then it's real. Um, exactly. So the experience of it is, is what's important. So yeah. And then in that case it can facilitate further healing. But it, of course it does allow itself to be used for conning because of course... Mm. So the irony about being conned is that people are so willing to believe. Yeah, they're, then they're, why do they want to ask magicians how they do it? Yeah, they don't no. want to know. <laughs> they don't really want to know. You want to tell them, don't ask, you're willing it for yourself. If they, if they knew how simple some of the best tricks are, they'd yeah. be quite... Um, disappointed to, to know that they were fooled by something so simple yeah. <laughs> like I said for me the, the trick is, is the tool to create the experience of magic and for me the experience yeah. is the magic um, I'm, I'm, I'm not naive enough to think that what I'm doing is real but I do believe that the, the moments that I create for people are magical so. mm. Mm. do you have a, a special area of magic that you're most interested in I like close up magic I do it my, my signature tricks I can steal somebody's watch and return it without them knowing so I think you did that to Nelson and I did it twice, <laughs> <laughs> twice. Um, <laughs> and for me that I like that sort of interactive close up magic where you can work with a group of people and, and explore interactions with the group yeah. um, I, I can do and I have done stage performances where it's the whole room but for me I prefer close up it's a of hand. Mm. So close up sounds more challenging. Someone sitting right there, presumably yeah. they could see what you're doing. And there are more variables. Yeah. Um, on stage, there's just one V 
viewpoint that you have to control with with close up magic it's everything interactive and something might happen that you've got to work into the show or use mm. different people's the way they react to um, like with Stephen Nelson Mandela's watch um, the only reason I could steal it a second time was because I noticed the mannerism that he had which I could use to cover the steel the second time so if that hadn't happened it would never have happened I wouldn't have been able to do it so you're using the people's the, the audience's interaction with you so there's a lot of to work some of the tricks being out. very present, being present yeah. and kind of responding and reacting absolutely so it's a very it's a little edgy I mean magic yeah. is edgy because I don't know is a professional magician afraid of being caught um, I used to be not so much anymore I have enough arts and I have enough understanding of, of the nice thing with magic is nobody really knows until you've done it what you were supposed to do so if say I want you to choose right. a card out of a pack of cards and I want you to choose the four of diamonds if I spread the cards and you don't choose that card, I have another route that I can take. Mm-hmm. If you chose that card, I can go one way. But then if you don't, for whatever reason, I can go another way. So there are outs for each. But with enough experience, you can find... Um, you don't really worry about getting caught. And sometimes you, you do get yourselves in positions where... Uh, there was a comedian a friend of mine, John Lenahan, who's a magician, comedian, brilliant guy. And he had a friend who would try and lose the audience. He'd do a stage show. And he would try and lose the audience and, and get them hating him halfway through the show and then win them back and get a standing <laughs> ovation. That was his. Oh, wow. So, so they are. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Yeah, and, and I mean, I've heard, you know, so there does seem to be sometimes a, a deliberate setup that mm. is, looks as if it's meant to cover failure, but still never does. But magicians often, when while they're pretending this is mm. real, this is say, I don't know yeah. if it's going to work yeah. and this doesn't always work, or yeah. sometimes. Or you actually make it not work and then yeah. you know, save, save the trick. Um, it well, makes you human as well. Uh, because, it's, exactly. It's, it's like the, the tightrope walker that falls off the, the tightrope into the net the first time, so then yeah. you go back up and show the, the audience that he's... Exactly. Uh, I had Megan Furness, is an Im- Im- improv actor. Okay. I had her here the other day, and she was, we were talking about improv, and I said, well, what, if, what when it fails? Yeah. What when the whole the stru- the setup fails? She said, we need it to fail sometimes. Then the audience knows this is real, that we really are making it up as we go along. And that might, I guess, make magic same, sometimes yeah. more real because yeah. it doesn't always work. Exactly. It's something that exactly. stops it working. Yeah. seems to be, especially the case with what are called mentalists, yeah. people who supposedly are reading minds or using other For me, there's, there's, no real, uh, there's a lot of distinction. People talk about magic and mentalism as two separate things, but for me, it's the same. If you're a magician yeah. and you'd be able to read somebody's mind, I don't see what the difference is. Exactly. It's better yeah. if you're not really doing it. Yeah. But uh, people that, that fake it and... and a lot of uh, there's a guy called John Edward. Hmm. Well, he's a fake mind reader. Yeah, he's a fake psychic. Yeah, yeah, he's a fake psychic, and and a lot of people get upset with me for saying it, but I don't like the way he works because if he was doing some good for people, yeah. yes, that's fine. Yeah. But f- a lot of that spiritualism and and, yeah. and things started after, especially now with the with the war in the Middle East, he's playing on people losing. Yeah loved ones and for me that's a a magician can watch John Edwards and see what he's doing and the majority of people really think he's talking to spirits and he totally claims that he he does the the nice thing about a magician is he tells you he's lying to you at the beginning yeah exactly and then he lies to you he doesn't take your money (laughs) and tell you that you're really talking to your dead relatives exactly and yeah yeah, and uh, yeah so I mean Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing, I mean, since we're on the subject, I heard this study, and I was wondering if he knew that the, if it's true that some of the TV magicians are also trickster uh, fakers, uh, specifically um, uh, Chris Angel yeah. and what's the British guy's name? Uh, uh, Dynamo. Dynamo. Yeah. And that they really are using good old-fashioned trick photography and not magic. A lot of them are, and that that for me is also. Um, Unfortunate because yeah. one of the things that seems to be true about magic um, is that it seems to attract people who feel a little bit either marginalised or socially in a lot of, especially when they're young. Um, all the magicians I know, including myself, were nerdy guys that, that got picked on at school. <laughs> so it, it uh, definitely there's something interesting about. Mm, I think you start magic because you you want you you like the puzzle of it, but it's also fun doing something that people don't know how it works so knowing something that, that um, other people don't is there's an attraction in that um, as you do more of it you understand the audience dynamics and yeah. but when you first learn those first few tricks in this puzzle you're doing it because you can do something that, that you can trick people with and it gives so, you so a secret so power yeah, so you don't feel power, yeah. so, so that definitely, that definitely 
um, place to people that need that in their you know, lives. Me for sure. I, I definitely learned it with yeah. to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I but I mean, it does amazing things for youngsters. Mm. The, the confidence, the social skills, well, the, the ability to interact that they gain. The College of Magic in Claremont has special done plans, amazing yeah. work in that sense. Um, so I guess magic. it gives them something to believe in about themselves yeah. or feel confident yeah. about themselves yeah. in some way. Um, I spoke to one magician, because you mentioned that it was also a, a craft, and he said to me, well, the whole craft is not noticing that it's a craft. Yeah. Most, Because most craftspeople, the amazement is you can't believe they can do that. Yeah. It's almost like a magician has to deny his craft, that he's got huge skills with his hands or with who knows what, but he's actually pretending to be something else. That brings me to the idea that a lot of the best tricks look really simple, and then the method is so diabolically clever. You actually yeah. want to tell the audience what happened because it's, <laughs> it's so clever. Yeah. You want to share the experience, but you can't because then it wouldn't be the magic. So, so that whole thing about uh, magicians keeping their secrets, um, the internet has made that very, very difficult. So where do we stand now? How is magic surviving I think in the, a world without secrets? The key is not the secret. The key is the presentation. The key is not the magic, but the magician. Um, we're still keeping busy with shows because we can present ourselves as magicians doing magic. The, everything that I do in my show can be Googled. Mm. Um, all the guys working around town, you can figure out what they're doing if you put the time in. But it's the presentation that's that's important. It's the human side of it, the interaction. That's so. There were in the 1920s there were guys that there was a trick with the Lincoln rings where basically you've got four rings, and I'm going to give away the secret. The, the, there's a one the rings got a hole in it. Mm. Um, but it's when you watch a good magician do it, you'll never know how it works because they're so good at the presentation. In the 1930s, they published a newspaper article about how this trick worked and told everybody that there was a ring in the... And one of the guys that was doing the show on stage was very upset about this because it was his main feature trick. And then what he did, he decided to take the next level. He came out with two rings with, with holes in them. He showed everybody the, the ring with a hole and threw that into the audience and then had a second removal <laughs> so that he could still do the trick. So he'd show them the method, yeah. but then, yeah. So even if people know, often people will, will say, can you do a trick with a handkerchief that disappears in your hand and then reappears? And they've seen it on the internet. And then I could do another trick with exactly the same method. And they went right away and they won't realize yeah. that it's the same thing. It's, so, so maybe, maybe the secret is not. Yeah, maybe the secret is not the point. It's kind of up the ante in yeah. managing the craft in such a way that it doesn't even matter. And it's actually given magicians an incentive to figure out some better tricks, which is also a good. Thing. That's a really good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. It is. We, we I guess say about what we do. We do, and the things that fool people uh, in the past wouldn't fool people now. I think yes and no. I think um, the better technology gets, the more the need there is for magic. Um, and the more people will start thinking it's technology or um, like for mind reading I think it's little hidden earphones and things that's when the methods that the, the old methods will work yeah you know, because they're looking at the wrong the wrong direction yeah from, from what do, how do you respond to the suggestion magic is for children yes but we're all children I think if we if we're living our lives right we're living in a childlike state of astonishment um, all the most successful people that I know that are doing really well in their lives have connected with their inner child and I think um, magic is for children but it's for everybody at the same time Do you ever have a moment maybe just a moment where it feels like what you're doing is real? Yeah, yeah. The, Tommy Wanda actually talked about that the, for a trick to work there has to be an element where in your mind you're thinking that you have to visualize what it should look like to the audience. So you have to believe it's real while you're doing it, for sure. Mm. Um, there are times, like I, I did a, a show at the uh, Mask Theatre now recently, and I do a little mind reading snippet where I say to somebody, think of your brother's name and write on a piece of cardboard, and then I figure out what it is and write on, on a board. And I said to the person, your brother's name, and he got a bit cold, and I said, is he here with you? And he says, I'm not sure, but he might be. <laughs> And then afterwards, his mom came up in tears and said he died. And it was an anniversary of his birthday. And they come out to he loved magic. They come to watch a show to celebrate him. So for him, that experience, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to pretend it was. 
but maybe in 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 the parallel universe. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I think so that is quite an important thing, maybe yeah. even in sometimes how magic works, that there's this synchronous moment yeah. where the magician actually plugs into something he is unaware yeah. of. Yeah. And it, like I said, it's the experience the experience for that woman and her son was different from the people in the audience, original mm. the audience but for them that was as magical as yeah. So. So, so I mean, it gets me back to thinking about John Edwards, that it's possible to give people that transcendental, profound experience without like conning them. them. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But you can still, they know they saw a magician, they know the magician doesn't claim to have raised the brother into yeah. the room, but they can draw their own significance. I think the, the key for me is, for most magicians, is to start studying the history of magic, because then you realize the shoulders you're standing on of really brilliant people over mm. centuries centuries and centuries of really good magicians that have put a lot of work into creating what we do so it would be uh, immoral I think yeah. to, to lie to to use their techniques to lie to people about what you're doing you should rather show them something amazing that they can experience and, and take back to the families and say you never believe what I saw today that's more powerful to me than saying I spoke to your dead uncle and then yeah. is there a place for magic outside of the performance, outside of where it's a performing art or an entertainment? Yeah, well for me day-to-day -day life is, um, I, I thoroughly enjoy going to a shop or the train station and then running out of money to pay for the ticket and then changing a 10 rand note into a 50 rand note and then paying for the ticket and then walking away like nothing happened. <laughs> for me that's what takes me to where, where yeah. people just freak out and then you, they ask what happened and go, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> just one moment of just impossible. Um, what about using it in whether it's uh, t uh, teaching situations or corporate situations? Yeah, a lot of guys that do that do corporate speaking, where they, they talk about their lives. Um, Wolfgang Rieber is a magician in uh, Cape Town and Germany now, um, who does really good motivational presentation um, with magic mm -hmm. interacting. I haven't seen it, so I don't know exactly what he does, but it can be a nice metaphor for people where they use the tricks to tell a story, but also life of a magician is interesting so people can talk about their experiences and then put that into a speech so yeah corporate speaking for sure i remember going on a tour for momentum doing magic where we had to produce magic tricks to illustrate a story for people um, as a product launch and one of the guys was fascinated by one of the, the heads of momentum was talking about how he would be fascinated a talk about persuasion and crowd control from a magician would fascinate him as a businessman. So there's that angle as well. We, we have an understanding of people which is unique. So, so, yeah. so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of psychology, I guess, in magic. And a, a magician would presumably be a better magician if he studied that. Yeah, and, and you learn it, it's practical psychology because you're learning it as you're doing it. But you learn how people interact in certain situations and you understand people in their... Uh, going back to traveling, I found that I, I like to say magic is my passport because I can travel to a new place and interact with people because magic gives me a, uh, a language that I can speak to people with. Of course, yeah. Um, so because of the understanding of people from the magic, I can understand people better when traveling. So in that sense, the magicians have a different different way of seeing, seeing the world. Yeah. Am I correct in remembering you wrote a book yourself? I did. I'm writing a book now, actually. Um, I wrote an e-book a little while back called Nomadic Magic, about traveling with magic. And it, went, it was quite well received. And I'm writing one now about all my adventures. I've had a lot of interesting adventures as a magician. So. I'm sure. <laughs> so, and uh, I'm one of those people that gets themselves into situations to see if you can get them out of them. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, so that's, that's, uh, that's added. added, good. added um, and I, I've traveled a lot, so a lot of, of travel stories in there. Um, so then let me finish by asking you, could you say, is there a way for you to say how magic has changed your life? Magic's given me an understanding of, of life. It's given me a huge respect for human beings uh, because I interact with people that from all walks of life. The nice thing about magic is it can put you in front of you. You can be, form, be performing. I did a show for Margaret Thatcher one day and then in Pulsman Prison the next day. Hmm. Um, you get to see all areas of life. So for me, it's difficult for me a lot about um, human, the good in human beings. Um, I've performed for 
the worst people in the world and the best people in the world and all of them have got a good side I've seen through the interaction with the magic um, there is some light in all darkness in, <laughs> in that sense it's given me everything good in my life as far as I'm concerned all, all, all the good things in my life have been traced back to me doing magic in some way I was a little scared he was going to steal my watch but all is well um, if you haven't yet signed up on the Facebook page, liked it, go and visit it. You can always see what's happening next week and sometimes in weeks ahead or whatever else exciting is happening that's connected to Rod's world and the show. And be sure to join me again next Friday at the usual time and place. See you then.